All right, looks like I'm in. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you are. You need to make the car pass now. I'm just trying to figure out how to do that, don't I? Well, I can't turn the recording off until you make the car pass. Yeah, I know. Well, don't. For those that don't know Nigel, he is Vice President at Bath Road in Bournemouth. He's a healer, a media, a tutor, an assessor for the SNU. He holds his CSNU and is currently studying for his DSNU and he's our good friend. Well, he was until tonight. Anyway, have I forgotten anything, Nigel? Unmute it, please. I can mute him. I can mute everybody. I can't unmute. Nigel, you're on mute. <laughs> you Nigel, you're on mute. You put me on mute. Okay. Thank you. Do you want me to do a romp through my year? Yeah. I'll... What, what, what would you like? All right, sorry, we're, we're messing with our own technology here. Apologies. Um, Nigel, I was just going to talk and introduce you to, to say it's great and very honorable to have you with us here this evening. And I was just going to say, would you like to talk us through your um, path towards spiritualism and the okay. things that happened to you and got you to the place you are at the moment? Okay, okay. Um, like many of you here, I'm sure as children, you were odd children. Things happened, you had different awarenesses of things. And that's how it started for me. I had no formal um, religious teaching, but as a very small child, maybe, for, is that Lynn? That's Lynn, yes. Oh. From a very small child, I used to talk about, oh, I don't think I did this when I was a little boy before, and that sort of thing. Now, as a child, you soon learn to shut up. It wasn't welcome. But the only reason I've said that was that the, the different, there was always an awareness of something. Now, I had a fairly regular childhood, but from about 14, I've been looking for God. And I could see people around the Christians and they were taking communion. And I thought that was the way forward. So in the 60s, at 18, I had myself confirmed, which is not what most teenagers would do. I thought maybe the, the gateway is through the communion. And maybe it is for some people. And maybe it would have been for me if I wasn't so isolated. But I didn't find it. I didn't find it there at all. But almost the next week, someone took me to the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain that at that time was in Belgrave Square. A huge, huge building that was falling down around their ears. And there I saw people who were very respectful of the spirit world, who were very sober, honest, 
serious people. And that's where I first encountered mediumship, but not healing. Now, I was living in London then, and I, I studied at the Spiritualist Association off and on for about 10 years, developing mediumship. I knew nothing about healing at all. And then, like most of us, life happens and you have to get on with your job and you can't, you have to favor your job. You can't spend all your time studying mediumship or working in mediumship. But I always sat in circles. I always meditated. And then something huge happened in my life. And Lynn, who's scarpered off camera, I haven't seen for 26 years. And Lynn was a huge influence uh, on my life. She's a wonderful healer and medium. And she helped my then partner to pass gently to spirit. And she in fact took his funeral. And I haven't seen her for 26 years. But the power of spiritual healing stayed with me. How profound that care can be to another person, to a stranger, to anyone, that a prayer sent from the heart, simple, but meant can change lives. And that stayed with me, and I'm talking now about 90, mid 90s. Uh, and then for work, I moved down to Bournemouth. Now, it was, wasn't until I came here that I found that spiritualism, this is going to sound stupid, is only available in a church. I never thought that the Spiritualist Association was a church. I thought that they were wonderful, honorable spiritual people. But it wasn't until I moved here that I found that you had to access it through a church. And many of the churches belong to the Spiritualist National Union or are allied to them. And they have very specific requirements of the people who work in them. Now, when I came to Bournemouth, many of you will know, uh, I started to sit in circle with Mark Stone, who is the most wonderful speaker, healer, teacher, medium, everything. And we were doing an exercise one evening and I talked to him about healing and he said, I've been waiting two years for you to say this. So have, the penny having dropped. And the, now, isn't it interesting that in spiritualism, the teachers wait for the penny to drop. They don't force it on you because it has to come in your time. Anyway, the, the, the penny dropped and I went along to Bath Road to inquire about training as healing. I just want to say I am not a healer. Nobody is a healer. I'm a healing medium. The power of the spirit world comes through me to the spirit of the patient. It's got nothing to do with me. I merely spent a lot of time learning to attune to spirit in order to do nothing at all. And the great joy for me has been that that's all I need to do. Throughout the last oh, 30 years, maybe more, I'm always curious. I am always doing a course. I've done courses on comparative religions, on mystic traditions, 
you name it, I've looked at it. And every belief system I've looked at, I get to a point and I go, mm, who says who? Talk to me about this, help me to make this mine. And I've never, re I've never been able to do it, never mind really been able to do it. But I feel the great joy of working for and with the spirit world is that there's me and there's God. And you don't need anything else. You just open up your soul to attune to the spirit world, to allow those energies, the healing energies to work through me, through the spirit of the patient. Now, it's taken me 70 odd years to realize less really is more. In fact, less is all that there is and all you need to do. But it's really, really hard and it's taken a lot of work to be able to do nothing. Now, in all of this, I, I continued to study mediumship. I was always fascinated by the mediums at Belgrave Square, by um, Lynn's mediumship, which she brought into my home with her healing. And I had wonderful opportunity to sit in circle with Dominic Williams for two years and was building up some uh, bookings within churches for active mediumship, which is the same, but very different to healing and is, is somewhat scarier in a way that you have to get up there Open up to the spirit world, open your gob and off you go, and know that you will be inspired. But none of those opp opportunities have, have been available for over a year. So I'm a bit rusty on that front. And on the healing front, we're not able to do contact healing still. But I have my own absent healing book. Uh, the Absent Healing Book of the Church and other churches. And I go to a worldwide uh, healing group uh, one evening a week where healing mediums from all around the world all come together to send healing to the world. And although that sounds like nothing, it is uh, it's a very touching and profound experience. It's all in the silence. The meaning of life is in the silence and in prayer. And I, I had no training in formal prayer, but I don't underestimate their value or their intensity if you mean what you say. Now, because I'm always doing courses and I'm always curious, I thought, well, uh, <laughs> To be a healing medium for the SNU, you have to do a, a, a theory course that's part of it. Quite dull. I said it out loud. But to give them their due, the SNU are rewriting these courses to make them more relevant, more interesting, more forward thinking. And because I'm curious, I decided to look into what was required to take the certificate, which is really quite a lot of work. It's another very long theory course. You have to go out of your district to be tested. You have to do a, a talk on uh, an aspect of healing training that they decide on. And is it worth it? What is worth it is personal development. I hate to stand still and to do nothing. And I'm always looking. And I have no answers to any of it. But I've learned one or two questions. And working onwards towards the diploma, that's really intense and the courses are really heavy. But at long last, they're about spirituality. And that's what 
we need more of. Not facts, none of that. Compassion, love, spirituality. And that's where I'm at. And, you know, I'm, I'm very touched that the terrible two asked me if I would have this conversation. And because I love them both dearly, I said, yeah, and, and how thick am I? I didn't realize you people would be here too. <laughs> I just thought it was me and them. <laughs> so in a nutshell, that is it. But I just want to say how interesting and incredible it is as you go through your journey of life. People who will have great influence on you pop up when they're most needed. I don't know if the Dominic, not on camera, is our Dominic, but on my screen, he sat right next to Lynn. Dominic. Well, that's how Dominic spells his name. Ah. Um, Lynn, I love you dearly, and I owe you a lot, and I learned a lot. So God bless you for that. Oh. And, and that's it. Marvis, we did mean to say that people could put questions in the chat, should they so desire. Um, or speak to me. I'll speak to you. That would be good. What I was going to say is, I've got one question for you. I'm quite impressed of the way you said less is more, because that seems to be very much a solid philosophy in, in life. And it's good to see that being reflected in, in your paths and discoveries. I was just wondering, do you think that the studying for the SNU has made you a better healer? No. What makes Would you, you like to expand on that slightly? But sorry. Would you like to expand on that slightly? What makes you continue to develop as a healer is your ability to attune to the spirit world. That makes sense. to the spirit world has got nothing to do with academic work. But depending on your makeup, because I'm quite used to academic work, I'm sure it does add to it. But in itself, no, you know, CSNU, DSNU shows that you've reached a level of understanding of the theoretical side of the union and aspects of healing but in itself it's, it doesn't make you a better healing medium not at all and um, i think people get concerned uh, that uh, well you know they don't want to do uh, uh, progress down the, that road but to just gain your healing card as it were and then stop and not do any more not to sit in the silence not to connect with spirit that will hamper your development there's work to be done every single day to sit to build your relationship with the spirit world and and that makes sense because it is in essence while it's not a completely personal based skill, there is an, like you say, an attainment and a practice to it yes. that needs, that needs to be amplified. And you can do that without having the book smarts to yes. pass the test. Yes. Because that's one thing I've noticed in, in my, even in my own career as a, a computer programmer is some of the best practical people working with computers are people who have never been to college they've learned how the machine works and how it you know they they know they understand the nitty-gritty and work build on that knowledge as opposed to being said this is all the theory go and make it work and, and that that to me sounds like it's but just to play slightly devil's advocate there is a certain level of of people's confidence in being able to do that is amplified by them having that piece of paper or that card that says you can do it. 
And um, there's well, that slight side to it as well. Um, within the union, you have to achieve a certain level of competence. But beyond that, deepening your ability to connect to the spirit world, is up, it's the individual's responsibility. And if the individual doesn't continue to work at it, then their ability to attune will stay the same or it, it may weaken in this lockdown. People can't work. There are hundreds of healing mediums not able to work. I don't know what they're doing to, as their homework. True. And I think, and I think your, your advice about sitting in the power seems to be a sensible thing to do because obviously you've got the, the ability, as you mentioned yourself, for the absent healing and the distance healing as well, which you can do in lockdown. Yes. I think you mentioned yourself, you've been in some online circles and things that, yes. that help you do that. Yeah. Uh, this, I belong to the SNUI as well, which is the sort of international branch, which is only online. And healing mediums from around the world come together to work. And it's an extraordinary experience to blend our energies together. And I think it's all about intention. You got the intention, job done. Yeah. I want to send love to the world, healing energy to the world. You've done it. Focus and send it. You don't have to labor it for hour after hour. Prayer can be simple and profound. Just mean it. Nigel, can I? Yes. Can I ask? Which, which camera are you in? Um, I'm on my camera, but I'm on his voice. Okay. Yes. Don't yes, worry. Yes, dear <laughs> Um I know you helped me a lot when I was doing my training about sitting in the power as opposed to meditation. Can you sort of help everybody and, and give them your explanations of the differences and which we should be doing more? Well, I do both. And meditation is simply getting in touch with my inner spirit, with my soul and just sitting and not doing anything. But the difference to me of sitting in the power is feeling your energy and then feeling your auric energy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And when you've got the energy, yes. you start to physically push it out. So I would push, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, till this whole room was full of conscious energy. So you're building, building, consciously building, and in actively engaged in that, mentally engaged in that. If I meditate, I just put myself in spirit's hands, and I go into myself, and I'm quiet. Okay. The help. How often would you sit in power as opposed to meditate? What well, I think, do you think is most uh, important. Uh, I think it's up to the individual, and some people feel they don't have time to do anything. But you know, spirit will take ten minutes if you haven't got any longer. They take five minutes if you haven't got any longer. I think if I'm sitting in the power, then I would take you know, a good 20 minutes. But you have to live your life according to what you have available. You know, if you don't have the time, you don't have the time. Very true. And rather than beat yourself up, because I don't, I can't sit and meditate for an hour, five minutes, job done. God's there all the time. And I think, like you say, it's down to your... <laughs> 
<laughs> I said, I think it's also down to the, the intention that you have and the intent you put with. It's all about intent. All of it. Indeed. We have a question for you, sir. Sue has asked, do you feel... What? Oh, sorry. Sue has asked, do you feel that people are now more inclined to develop their own spirituality from the wealth of information that is now more widely available? Where's that question? Lynn's got a question. Is that... uh, that's been sent. What? No, no, this is Sue sent it directly to me to ask you. Oh, okay. Say it again. I do apologize. Say it again. I was going to get into a mute, yeah. but the screen seems to be a bit clear. Say it again. Yeah. Do you feel that people are now more inclined to develop their own spirituality from the wealth of information that is now more widely available? I hope so. Wherever you're, wherever you're getting it from and gathering it to, as long as you're doing it, you're doing it. It's not up to any one person to say, this is what it is. This is what your journey must be. And if you do this, this, and this, you will get to that point. Because you might do this, this, and oh, no. It's what sits well with you. Every one of us has had a very different life's journey. So all of us have a different truth. But love is love, however you get there, because it's all about love. I know that sounds wet and corny, but it isn't. You know, the energy behind love is incredible. So however you can get it by any of the new age um, experiences, all of the, the psychic tools available, the teachers available, go for it. I, so yes, it is the answer. <laughs> Lynn mentioned, the only reality is the testimonial of the last person who received healing, perhaps. Well, that's to everyone. So would someone else like to kick it off? Please You've gone silent, <laughs> Lynn. Can you unsilent, Lynn? I can't unsilence anyone. I can get everybody to be quiet. Unfortunately, I cannot unquieten people. They have to do it for themselves. Unfortunately. Then you uh, speak. Uh, Nigel. <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, love. <laughs> oh, the journey to the sweets, the land of the sweets. I remember that so well. Yep. Dear Andrew. Now, the thing is that I, 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 I put that because it was really something for you I thought perhaps you could you know talk about it a little okay you know, when I said the only reality is the testimony of the last person who received healing perhaps you know regardless of all our certificates and work that we do on ourselves and you know in book learning and, and techniques that we learn and everything but ultimately like our mediumship you know it's the last message we gave as mediums if it was any good oh. for the person and well, the healing, if it's any good for the person who received it, you know, if they have that. That rather suggests that the person receiving either the message, the, the verbal message, or the healing message has to instantly get it. And it doesn't work like that. You know yourself that you can give a message and Fred will say, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who that is. I don't remember that, blah, blah, blah. They go away and the penny drops sometime later. I don't actually think it's my business how, how can I say this in the right way? I, I, I'm a conduit for the healing to the patient, that patient is not necessarily going to feel better immediately. 
but I believe with all of my being that every healing works. So absolutely, I am concerned that I've been the best channel for the healing energies. And that's all I can do. And I'm not looking for praise of, oh, I feel better. I think that that's not for me. But I, I, I take what you're saying, but I think, I think people are more and more understanding. It isn't a quick fix. Yeah. And of course, there's healing on many levels. Of course. Mediumship is healing for a start. Yeah. And it's yeah. always overlooked. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Isn't it? Always. Yeah. I, I thought I would draw you out on that, Nigel. Hmm. Yeah. Not like you, Lynn, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that answered to some extent what you wanted. Um, Fran said something. Oh, no. Just Indeed. telling us. So, Sue, Sue has her hand up to ask a question, Nigel. Sue, would you like to ask a question? Yeah. Thank you, um, Nigel. I've got two, two questions, really. One just quickly follows on from yours and Lynn's um, comments about healing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that people need to understand more um, about healing? Because Lynn mentioned that it heals on many levels, but sometimes there's like a blinkered expectation of healing. I think there is. They don't understand, like, from a soul perspective and this type of thing. I, I completely agree. And I think a lot of people are engaged with it purely on a physical level. And, okay, so <laughs> let's talk about this. Because the healing energies from the spirit world come down through the spirit of the healing medium to the spirit of the patient, not yeah. to the body of the patient, to the spirit, to wake that spirit up, to the spirit's responsibility to heal that person. But you're quite right, so many, many, many people just see it on a physical level. And if we could, I want to say, if we could educate them, Sue, but people <laughs> could, could educate them Selves. I don't know how we do educate them. No, no, Nigel. And actually, I'm changing what I was going to ask as a second thing now because I want to follow this up slightly, if that's okay. Of course, yes. Um, I've been trying to um, look at how to help people understand the fact that they are spirit in human form and we connect with spirit, but also the earth itself has its own spirit. All life, all nature is also spirit. And I've started thinking that if people understood that more so that they would feel the connectedness more, it might be more sense rather than sometimes it's the idea of going to like uh, spiritualist churches, as you said, or centers and um, uh, for a message and, and, and obviously to connect with their God. But um, it's just missing this, this connectedness that we're all spirits. We somehow in the psyche that is disconnected somehow. We need to bring that back in, I feel. I, I don't think it's central enough to the teaching or anybody's teaching, that we are in fact spirit in a body, not a body with spirit. Yes. And if we could, all of us here will continue after we dump the body that we've got, we will continue as we are. But it's just not central. We hang on to the physicality and therefore, people look for the healing to be of the body. It's spirit to spirit. Yes. How you do that, you can only do your bit, Sue, in your work and in your teaching. It, it needs addressing in a wider uh, arena, of course, but even to talk from, uh, <clears throat> when chairing a service 
and last week I talked about, you know, every blade of grass needs healing. Everything. Yes. But we keep ourselves aloof as well as apart. If we could bring forward wider teaching that we are all spirit, we would really move forward. That, that you think? as well, Nigel. Say again. That is my feeling as well, Nigel. I don't know how we do that. And if anyone here and now will enter into conversation, I would welcome that. May, may I just add something about earth spiritualities? Yes. Where they're more connected with nature and that type of thing. And so the honor spirit of the place, spirit of the well, the water, fire, and this type of thing. Yes. How we can introduce that into um, spiritualism, if you like, in a way that um, it's not going to bring some of that, I'll have to say, fear or, or resistance because it's a different a vibration in the spirituality but nonetheless we're also here on earth and part of the earth and the earth sustains us mm -hmm. so how do we bring say that type of thing together perhaps well you, you've said a couple of words one of which is resistance and people do resist what they don't know don't they immediately and feel threatened by it uh, my feeling is that those of us who have a voice in churches have to speak out, speak up, and incorporate the gentleness of nature more and more into our work. No, but we can't bang a big drum and terrify everybody, but just, although that would be quite good fun. Yes. Uh, By example, the best teaching is by example. Would you agree? Yes, I would. And also a, a gentle approach, as you say, you can't throw it in somebody's face, but it's part of developing an awareness. Yeah, and it's also managing perceptions as well. Yes. And... The problem we have is there's so many flags on this planet that people rally around and trying to break down those perceptions of divinity and structures like that and realizing that you are your own divinity. Yes. And I think that's going to be one of the hardest things to break down because a lot of people are conditioned to believe they depend on something else. Yes. And that is the big part to break. The big problem is that most people have the notion that God is external and not that we all have a spark of divinity in us and a shared responsibility for everything. It's not somebody else's problem. It's our problem. Right. Yes, definitely. But, uh, I think it's quite hard. Sorry, somebody spoke. Just... Yeah, sorry, Frank, go on. Could part of the problem be when we go to church and hold a service, it's indoors. I once went to, it was on a scout camp and we had a service and it was, you actually had to walk along a, a narrow ledge and it was amongst the trees. It was the most magical setting I've ever been to. And I think the most connected I ever felt. Maybe we should look at occasionally taking our service outside to connect to nature and help that connection Worth be felt. A conversation. But I think there's a lot of legwork to be done beforehand until we can catch on that we are spirit in the body we have we can't move forward no i don't think um 
Can I can I just add something again here about um, where we develop our awareness and people go to sit in circle, et cetera, et cetera. We talk about developing our awareness. Well, through that, we should also be re recognizing the awareness of spirit of all these other divine beings here on Earth. And so, again, there's just this disconnection, isn't there? It, 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 it's knitting that together somehow and whether it means taking people more within themselves because you've just mentioned where people seek externally we've been doing that and been led in this grand illusion yes can only go back within ourselves um, i just want to say one thing that i want to talk to libby um <clears throat> that Many, many people think that the medium or the healing medium is special, and they are not. And if we could get through, you know, I'm only a healing medium because I studied healing energies. Anybody could do it. Uh, and really what I'm saying is people see that there is a divide but they also want to keep it as a divide because it's it, it means that they don't then shock horror have to take responsibility absolutely and also they need to take self-responsibility yes and that is the glory of spirit right, Lynn, Lynn. I, I would just like apologies to... for that yeah, I, I was I just going to say, like Lynn has to... physically raised her hand. <laughs> Go on, Lynn. I, I would like to mention, I, I've sat silent, of course, um, <laughs> that, you know, the idea that we are spirit within our bodies is a very old, and it's act, it actually was told us, uh, it, I know that people are frightened, perhaps, of talking about the New Testament, for instance, but Paul of Tarsus, was very, very vociferous in telling people that we were spirit within ourselves and that we were vessels for spirit and that we were sparks of the divine and that we all had gifts of the spirit and that we were all spirit within. And um, I think that what really sort of uh, uh, worries me is the fact that, yes, there is this information out there and, you know, we've put layers and layers of information about that, that we are all spirit within. Um, it's about getting it through to people's own uh, prejudices and, and um, you know, closed mindedness about that. And even if you like, the, the very people who condemn us, the spiritualists, uh, who come from, say, one of those orthodox religions, um, who don't actually pay attention to their own prophets and uh, who are, have been telling them all the way through that they are spirit here and now and that they will go to spirit. So it, I think we have to just press home our truth more and more, but to remember that it's an old truth that we are actually professing in the here and now, in the 21st century, this is a truth that was talked about 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. So um, we just have to try and keep cheerful in the face of all this sort of combined ignorance, I think, about what we really are and what we're about. And the other thing about the open air, I have to say to you that uh, John Wesley, uh, who started the Methodist um, movement, um, he used to take outdoor outdoor meetings, outdoor worship meetings, and uh, he used to go to pubs, basically, and park his horse outside a pub and take prayer meetings there. And I think that they probably were, you know, that, that's why he got such a huge following, because um, he did have his meetings outdoors, and I think that's a wonderful idea. And I always think that these, the greatest of the cathedrals, if you look up, it's like being in a forest. I often think that, you know, all those sort of, um, you know, flying buttresses just look like the arches, the branches of trees. 
so it's almost like human beings trying to imitate you know spirit outside bringing it inside so just a thought anyway and um i'm sure that uh that nigel will have something to add to it um and perhaps we'll see nigel charging about on a horse uh, I think that's how you like it, then, <laughs> but you know, in your dreams. Well, it's a sort of romantic notion that I have, you know. <laughs> I don't think I could even get on a horse now. But <laughs> I, I hear all you're saying, and I applaud how learned you are. But how do we do it? How, with what we have available, either church pulpits from the platform or uh, within other spiritual organizations, we can only chip away at one one by one by one, can't we? Yeah. Uh, and we can only do our best, but we're, we're not moving much. Nigel, Christine has a question for you. Christine, would you like to unmute and ask your question? Yes, I would. Hi, oh. Nigel. I just want to add um, what Lynn said about, um, you know, being outside. Um, I do sort of um, sit in the power outside. Mm -hmm. That's where I get my energy from, out in nature. And I just wanted um, if Nigel could elaborate on that or if he does the same. Uh, I do when it's warm enough, yeah. but it's all down to the individual, of course but you are a creative spirit that works a lot with outdoor imagery and I think that's what you know you're very drawn to that but I think it's not uh, advisable to start to tell people you must sit in the power outside you must sit in the power inside you must you must you must I, I, I crave for a spiritual path that has no you musts in it. Yeah. It's so individual. Yes, it's just nature. It's, it, it's full of energy. It's so important. Yeah. It's, and I hear what Sue was saying, although she's moved, her camera's moved. And I think it's up to us that have opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. It's the only way we can do it. It's down to opportunity. Yeah. And if you have no opportunity to speak, but want one, we have to work within the constraints of the society that we're in. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be able to speak from platform, then you have to ask for the opportunity to do so. Because there's plenty of things that could be changed in our traditional spiritualist services yes would you not agree yes hmm. uh libby can i ask you because you wrote something out and i'm not sure that i completely follow it that you said creativity is a really effective way to raise a person's awareness could you elaborate on that for me yeah for um, us? this we we come in with we're part of a very, very busy world um, and creativity. Um, I, I belong to an arts organisation and we do all sorts of creative things. And it's, it's quite amazing to watch somebody have a go at something creative and grow. Because they've taken time away from all this busyness to actually connect with something that's within themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good way to then start, if, if the subject comes up, you start talking about spirituality, you start talking about what it is that's inside that person. Mm -hmm. So you do it from a very gentle other way. Um, if you, as you said, if you go out there and start banging the drum, everybody runs a mile. Yeah. So you do it through a, a, some sort of creativity group. Somebody discovers they have something inside them that's helped them to create, or they, they feel good about whatever they've done, what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. And it's, I have seen people grow exponentially because they have taken part in some sort of creative activity. 
kept coming back and opened it is, up. Is it in a way, uh, um, almost by taking your mind off uh, your stresses or, or the big picture and making something creatively that, that wasn't there. To create work is one of the most wonderful things. Yes. And to yes. give people insight into their abilities. I wholeheartedly agree with you. How we bring this into uh, our work I'm not sure, but I get what you're saying, where you're coming from. It, it's about, um, yes, we need more people to come into the churches and join us and, and be part and parcel of. However, we've got, to, I think we have to be creative in the way that we look at attracting people in, because people are prejudiced. People have been now, not misinformed, I'm not going to say that. No. There is a whole conversation to be had on yeah. what Libby has just said. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. oh, I was, we'll have it. Have... <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that due to the lockdown and the changes of within society and things like that, in your opinion, Nigel, would you think this is a good time now to start looking at how we could implement different ways of encouraging people into of, de of, of dealing with spirituality. Yes. The world has given us a serious pause. Yeah. We've been put on hold this year and however long. It's an ideal time to put it back together in a different way. Indeed. But without, without knowing how to put it back together, it will just go back to how it was. Can you see Lynn's got a hand up? Colin. Lynn, uh, see, Lynn's see, got a hand up. A real hand up. Not yeah, a, a real hand. hand. She has I, two. I missed, I missed that one. I, I was just going to say that, um, for instance, our, our church here in Littleport, we're going to continue, uh, because we have Wi-Fi in the hall, we're going to continue to broadcast our services. You know, like everybody's been broadcasting services, Lawrence Ooh. and everyone, and Spirit yeah. for Spirit, um, that Rev Nick's going to uh, put cameras up and we're going to actually broadcast our services in the same way that we've been doing it basically through this lockdown situation so oh, that we can sort idea. of um, use social media still and that these uh, platforms, you know, internet platforms to get the word out and to attract people. I mean, we've had thousands of people as we all have, you know, actually, you know, m many more people than we could have ordinarily squashed into the hall or into the churches uh, actually following our services and, um, so we decided that we were going to continue to broadcast them. Uh, so I think that that could be a good and a very different way. Um, because the other thing about that is that they're not edited. You know, the slick television presentations of mediumship that we've been subjected to, and I use that word uh, advisedly, mm -hmm. subjected to, have all been edited up versions of the real thing. And I think that if we can go out walks and all, you know, all the erms, ahs, and I'm not sure, and I'm not sure about that, and I don't want to speak to him, and can't somebody else come through, and oh dear, I might have got that wrong, you know. All those things that make up a very rich tapestry of spiritualist, um, you know, uh, practice, that we can get that out to the general public work on a global scale now, as we yeah. have been doing. So I think, you know, that all of our churches, hopefully, where they can, would broadcast their services. Literally, that's, a service is a service, isn't it? That's very true. And I think a lot of, a lot of, as I'm taking his name tonight, have done a lot of very interesting and proactive things in the lockdown to promote 
um, with things like the Lyceum night and chats like this, just letting people be people. Earlier today, we were watching one of the earlier ones, as you can catch most of these services and events on his YouTube, uh, the church's YouTube channel, um, which is a great way of, and a repository of the knowledge and experience of a wide range of people. Yeah. Like Nigel. Um, as we're drawing up to seven o'clock, I'm going to hand over to my beautiful host. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still on GMT. Um, that's old fashioned like that. I, I don't conform to national norms, you know. No. Uh, before I sit down, has anybody who hasn't asked a question got a question? Nigel. Hmm? It's me. Oh, no, me. You yes. appear in two windows. It's very disconcerting. I know. Um, you, my train of thought's going. Right. As we were talking about healing, mm -hmm. do you think that maybe increasing the prominence of healing would encourage people to get back in touch with the fact that they are spirit? Is that one you way that we within, could? Are you saying we could get them service? back in touch? Are you saying within a service? You said increased prominence. Yes, well, I think within well, the service. If it was up to well, me, if yes, we did, I would. But where is the problem? No. No. Sorry. Say it again for me. If we did more healing, if we sort of made healing as a, a bigger section, that would encourage people to be in touch with their own spirit. Do you think that that would help? If it went hand in hand with the speakers from platform talking about being a spirit in a body, then yes. But if it was just the same old, same old, but with more healing, then they'd be bored. Yeah, but we've, we've got to introduce this new world following lockdown, as Colin said. Do you, we... It has to be hand in hand with a different way of speaking. So would that be something we could encourage, in uh, your opinion? I, I would endorse that wholeheartedly. Whether other people would, I do not know. But I think we do need to work on the education of ourselves and others that we are spirit in a body. Until we catch on to that, we're not going anywhere. I mean, it's huge, isn't it? Yes, Indeed. we could do a whole nother night on that alone. We could. A, a lady's got a hand up. I see. Hello. Can you unmute? Yep, sorry. <laughs> my, name's <laughs> my name's Julie, by the way. Sorry, I'm on my daughter's account. I won't explain all that to you. <laughs> um, I was just um, going to say, I... I I've been lucky enough to be brought up as a spiritualist. So um, from childhood, I've always gone to church. Um, but I do, uh, in my own personal stuff, I use like a um, spirit box and things, things that people would say were paranormal tools. Because um, I've had for mm, probably about the last sort of seven, eight years, um, seeing that a lot of people, like young people, are interested in watching paranormal programs such as Most Haunted and things like that. Think of them of what you will. <laughs> but um, I've always had this thing of like, we have got technology. If you saw the hits that people on the internet are getting with any sort of uh, ghost sort of practice or anything. And to me, anyone that looks at that has a question even if they're looking at it to be scared or anything like that, you'll get that sort of amount. You'll get some people that want to dismiss it. But I've always thought to get my word across that we are spirit in a human form as such. Um, I talk to these people and put that out there and use sort of paranormal stuff to grab hold of them to start with, yeah. to hopefully that, 
they will take that on board and look at their self as like, oh, I can communicate with my own loved ones. I don't need to be sitting in a graveyard um, looking for frills. And I just wanted to say that, that that's sort of a, an avenue where I think there's a lot of younger people because um, that's what's on offer for I, them, really. I, I think you're very right. The younger people are coming at this from a very different angle and we need to catch on to it. Yeah. Stop banging the old drum because they're not interested. Yeah, they're not going to... Um, I mean, with church, especially in today's age, anything that is conforming, they're going to not want. <laughs> well, yeah. that's what the that's... young generation do by default. We mm. all do that. You reject yeah. what's gone before. I don't know if you've all got the chat uh, window open, but Sue has made a very apt comment. I'll just read it to you that I feel that people need to move from being in their head in seeking to understand to their heart and develop their sense of knowing. Mm -hmm. And once you reach that sense of knowing, that's a wonderful place to be. The one I think, to be. and I think that is an excellent place to leave it there. Nigel, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to hand over to my beautiful host, co-host, boss, to to do the closing out. Um, all I want to say, apart from thank you to Nigel, is a Good. reminder that next Saturday at seven o'clock on Facebook, we've got Brian Walker, who is a psychic surgeon. So that will follow on from our healing theme. And Nigel, thank you ever so much. It's been wonderful having you on here. I, I believe we wish you happy birthday. And thank you everyone for coming. Thank you oh, for thank being you. here. I'm, I, uh, in retrospect, I'm glad I agreed to, to, to talk. <laughs> it's been really great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.